Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Good to see Thank you, Jesus. some out here, Thank you, everyone Jesus. out here Thank to you, make Jesus. a priority. That'll Hallelujah. stop in a second. Don't mind it. Good to but uh, so many have made it a priority to be at midweek Bible study. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me just quickly, uh, legacy this coming weekend, uh, or not, I'm sorry, not this coming weekend. Let me get my weekend. The weekend after that, the 19th, the 20th, uh, and we are going to have a wonderful time in the Lord that weekend again. Brother Cornwell will be with us. Marriage Matters, September 15th and 16th, and do we have a sign-up for that yet? We don't. We will have a sign-up for that Sunday. And so please um, go ahead, whether the sign-ups there or not, it's happening. That is Friday night, the 15th, Saturday, the 16th, starting at 10 a.m. on Saturday. And so we'll be there from about 10 a.m. We're hoping to be done about 1, 1.30. You go ahead and take that time off from work. Uh, couples, married couples, this will bless your marriage. Okay, you need to be a part of this. Your marriage matters, amen? Your marriage matters, and you need to be a part of that. And it, I mean, it just doesn't just matter to you, and that's important. But let me go a little, it matters to this church, amen? Because the enemy will attack your marriage, amen? And it will cause problems within the church, Amen. And so I would encourage you, make uh, be intentional, be a part of that sep September 15th, 16th. It's a whole $25 for the couple. You can't eat at McDonald's for $25 anymore. And that will be a dinner Friday night and lunch on Saturday. Amen. But, uh, so, uh, but that is $25, and that is $25 to be, to be paid uh, within two weeks of that event, and so we'll have that. Don't worry about that. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Hallelujah. You young people have no idea what that means. You have no idea what a main line is. Amen. And I'm, I, don't, I ain't got enough time tonight to even explain it to you. You just leave your head scratching. John chapter 17, Jesus is praying. And gives us the example of prayer. And he's praying and he says, I have given them thy word. And the world hath hated them because they are not of the world. Because the word is not of the world. How many understand this Bible isn't always going to make sense to men's philosophies and men's reasons. Because it's not of the world. But they've hated it. Even as I am not of the world. Jesus said, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. But thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world. Even as I am not of the world. Why are they no longer of the world? Because now the word is made flesh. The Word is manifested in the flesh, and that's exactly what the Holy Ghost is. The Word is now manifested in this flesh. Amen. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy Word is truth. How many understand and know the Word of God sanctifies you? Amen. The Word of God sanctifies you. I've got to get this Word in me. Amen. I got to get this word in me. That means I got to pick this Bible up and I got to open it. Not just on occasion and not just when I'm feeling bad, but I got to get that word in me. We like to quote Jeremiah that the fire shut up in my bones and we think that means the Holy Ghost. What was the fire? It was the word. Oh, when the Word gets in the child of God and begins to stir in you. Oh, how it was, when you let it work, it'll be like fire shut up in your bones. It, it, you can't keep it in, and it will purge things out of you, and it will sanctify you. 
Amen. I'm thankful for a chance to come together as the people of God to study the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. It's important in my life. I hope it's important in your life. We're going to open tonight in prayer. We've got several prayer needs here tonight. I'm going to ask if we would remember the Jones family, our neighbors here. His wife passed this morning, so we're going to lift them up in prayer um, tonight. The Johnson's granddaughter, Ashley, Sister Doni, Jackie Allen, Melvin, Sister Michelle's grandmother, I think is what that is, grandmother, Vivian Farmer, Aubrey Bar Barrett, Latasha Balmer, Latasha, the Ali family, the Willoughby family, the Roman family, and Edna Adams tonight. If you've come into this sanctuary tonight with a need, would you lift that up to the Lord right now? When, oh, Lord, we love you. We thank you. We thank you, God, for every opportunity to call on your name. We thank you, Lord, for every need and every circumstance, God. Lord, not for the sickness, God, but God, for the opportunity that faith would grow, God. Not for the, oh, God, not for the trial, God, necessarily, but God, I'm thankful for the opportunity to learn to trust you a little bit more, God. And Lord, right now, we ask you to touch each and every one of these situations. Lord, the needs of comfort, God, the Jones family, Lord, the needs of salvation, God, and the needs of healing, Lord, you know every situation and every circumstance. We love you, God, and we thank you for this, God. And we're believing, Lord, in a miracle. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, Lord, we magnify you. Would you give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight? Our ushers are going to come tonight and receive up tonight's offering. Brother Gardner is going to come and lead us in a, a few moments of worship tonight. Why don't we just give the Lord some praise in the sanctuary? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Bless the offering, Elder Dabney, please. Hallelujah. God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. I feel him in my hand. I feel him in my feet. I feel him in my heart. I feel him all over me. I said, God's not dead. He's alive. Oh, God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. I feel him in my hand. I feel him in my feet. I feel him in my heart. I feel him all over me. I say, God's not dead. He's alive. Hallelujah. Help me. God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. I feel him in my hand. I feel him in my feet. I feel him in my heart. I feel him all over me. I say, God's not dead. He's alive. There is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. It's like no other name I know. There is healing in the name of Jesus. Oh, healing in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. It's like no other name I know. How many know it tonight? There is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. It's like no other name I know. My God's not dead. Oh, God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. I feel him in my hand. I 
feel him in my feet. I feel him in my heart. I feel him all over me. I said, God's not dead. He's alive. Oh, what's his name? Jesus, what's his name? Help me, what's his name? Oh, what's his name? There is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, there is healing in the name of Jesus. Oh, what's his name? Oh, what's his name? Oh, what's his name? Oh, what's his name? There is some joy in the name of Jesus. Oh, there is peace in the name of Jesus. Oh, there's salvation in the name of Jesus. Oh, there is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, shout his name. Oh, shout his name. Oh, shout his name. Oh, shout his name. Oh, shout that name above all names. Oh, shout that name. Oh, shout that name. Oh, shout that name. Shout the name of Jesus. Shout the name of Jesus. Shout the name of Jesus. Though there is power, power in his name. Oh, there is healing, healing in his name. Oh, shout his name. Somebody shout the name. Somebody shout the name. Somebody shout the name. I said, God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. I feel him in my. Can you feel him? I feel him in my feet. I feel him in my heart. I feel him all over me. I said, God's not dead. He's alive. Oh, what do you know about Jesus? He's an awesome God. What do you know about Jesus? He's an awesome God. What do you know about Jesus? He's an awesome God. Awesome God, awesome God, awesome God. Do you know him tonight? Oh, what do you know about Jesus? He's an awesome God. What do you know about Jesus? He's an awesome God. What do you know about Jesus? He's an awesome God. Awesome God, awesome God, awesome God. Oh, tell me, what do you know about Jesus? He's a mighty God. What do you know about Jesus? He's a mighty God. What do you know about Jesus? He's a mighty God. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Oh, what do you know about Jesus? He's an old time God. What do you know about Jesus? He's an old time God. What do you know about Jesus? He's an old time God. Old time God, old time God, old time God. Oh, tell me. What do you know about Jesus? He's a mighty God. What do you know about Jesus? He's a mighty God. What do you know about Jesus? He's a mighty God. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Oh, I said God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. Oh, my God's not dead. I feel him in my hand, I feel him in my feet, I feel him in my heart, I feel him all over me, I say God's not dead, he's alive, one more time, God's not dead, he's still alive, God's not dead, he's still alive, oh God's not dead, he's still alive. I feel him in my hand, I feel him in my feet, I feel him in my hand, I feel him in my feet, I feel him in my hand, I feel him in my feet, I feel him in my feet, I feel him in my hand, I feel him in my feet, I feel him in my hand. I feel him in my feet, I feel him in my heart, I feel him in my heart. 
I feel him in my heart, just like fire. Feel him in my heart. I feel him in my heart. I feel him all over me. I say, God's not dead. He's alive. Oh, somebody praise him now. Hallelujah. 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 How many know he's alive? Oh, praise him. Amen, amen, amen. He's a living Savior. Amen. He's a living Savior. Hallelujah. He's a living Savior. Amen. Amen, amen. A living Savior. No grave marker. No grave marker. Amen. They get all excited because they, they think they found years, many, many years ago, a, a cloth that may have been, may have been a burial cloth for Jesus. I, I got a lot more than a burial cloth. Come on now. God's not dead. Amen. Hallelujah. Thankful I know him. I know he is my living Savior. All of our kids, you're dismissed. All of our children uh, up to the age of 11, you're dismissed at this time. I do have one more quick announcement I, I missed, and that is this Sunday night will be um, our first time in many years we're going to have a dedicated monthly offering to missions. Um, now, we give very faithfully to missions, but what we're going to start doing, and it will begin this Sunday evening service, this coming Sunday evening service. So that offering, any if, if you got a if you want to give into missions on a monthly basis, that's the time to do it. Second Sunday of every month in the evening service, we will take that offering. Everything that comes in that offering beside the tithe that might come in the, in a tithe envelope, that, that'll still go in the tithe. But if you want to give into missions, that's the offering to do that. Brother Curtis, why don't we give Brother Curtis a hand? He's going to be leading that. Amen. Bringing a testimony of one from one of our missionaries from the field. You can see our missions wall back here is almost complete. We're just shy of a few little things to finish on it. But if you've ever been curious on what missionaries we support, that is almost all of them. That is all of our missionaries, but the ones we are not allowed to put up. And we do have a few of those that we support that are, are not, we are not allowed to put their picture or the nation that they are in for their safety. But we are thankful for all the missionaries and missions. There's other missions we do give to um, in this nation, Tupelo, and those things that we give to as well. But thankful for all of those that is made possible by our giving. Amen. Amen. We have been um, speaking on spiritual warfare the last two Wednesdays. Um, as the Lord has led me, I asked um, Sister Carrie to bring a Bible study tonight. And she said, well, I, I feel to lead a certain direction if that's okay. And so I'm excited about what she's going to come and teach tonight. I, I know it's going to be a blessing to you. Why don't my, and, and hold on just a second, Sister Carrie. Um, and I call her, I got to be very careful with this. I, I love her dearly. She, she, is, um, she is my eldest sister. And, um, uh, and I was telling somebody she was my youth pastor. She was. Uh, we grew up in ministry. That's all we knew. Um, and and young, some of you young people, I was teaching Sunday school classes at your age when I was supposed to be in Sunday school classes. And that's just what you did. And um, uh, you just, if there was a need, you did it. And you filled that role. And so that's what we did and were raised to do so. But that being said, um, uh, I can say this in, in honesty and not just flattery, not just because I am her brother, but um, and, and But my sister has a true love and a desire for the Word of God and a student of this Bible, and I appreciate that so much. She, um, uh, 
she tried to teach me, and I, I'm going to take as long as I've given her to, to teach tonight, but I'm, I'm going to try to be done. She tried to, she, was, she competed nationally for several years as a Bible quizzer, and um, I come along with the age, and so she did it. Um, my other sister did it. My brother did okay with it, and then here I come along. And they tried and tried to work with me and 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 uh, it just was not for me and uh, and I struggled with it and the quizzing it's a whole nother thing than just memorizing verses but it's it's also quizzing and, and recalling it and, and, uh, and if you've ever watched a Bible quizzing match it, it will change your life uh, what those kids store in their minds but she did this on a national level for many years and when my two sisters, I say this with a lot of pride, when my two sisters would step to the table, the other team would lose a lot of, a lot of enthusiasm. They just, they were all pumped up, and then my two sisters would step up to the other table, and they would just deflate. Uh, they were, they were mean machines when it come to Bible quizzing, and I was so proud to just be their little brother. But she's going to come tonight and minister to Life Tabernacle Church for the first time since she's been here and been a part of this church. Why don't we give her a clap, a welcome tonight to this pulpit tonight as she teaches us. Love you. First I have to turn on the mic. <laughs> Let's give a, a hand clap of praise to the Lord right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence that we feel in this place. We thank you, Lord Jesus, Lord, for meeting us here, God. We thank you for what you are going to speak to us, Lord Jesus. We bless your name in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. While I have you standing, we will go ahead and um, read the word of God. Um, it, we're going to read in Ephesians chapter 6, where pastor has been teaching and um, and yes when he he called me and asked if I would teach I, I did have a lesson in mind um, and it's actually something that had been kind of in my mind is sister Anika here tonight since our conversation there you are sister <laughs> and um, and so um, so I, I agreed to it, and then I was like, what did I just agree to? <laughs> but let's go ahead and read. We're going to read to, well, let's just go ahead and read to, to verse 20. I may teach a little different than others around here. I'm just thankful you all let, let me feel at home and, and given me this privilege to teach tonight. So finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, everyone say it, to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel and for which I am an ambassador in bonds that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Jesus, right now, Lord, won't you just anoint, oh, Lord, this, this uh, lesson, God, I pray your anointed word that, that is about to go forth, Lord Jesus, that it would touch the hearts and the minds of all these that are gathered here. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. Amen. You, let's give him a praise one more time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I bless the Lord. 
Y'all may be seated here. You may be seated in Jesus' name. I'm, I am going to speak tonight and teach a little bit from this title, Arming Ourselves for the Battle, Armed for Battle. And what I want to do is going to be very practical. I want to take these, le these scriptures that we have just read and I want to give us a practical example of praying on the armor of God. Now, it may seem very simple to some of you, especially those of you who are, are prayer warriors, but I hope you'll be able to glean something from this and that each person will be able to get something from it. But this is, this is something that I have found to be helpful in my own life especially when coming up against spiritual battles and, and struggles in my own life. And so I think it is very important that we know how to pray, pray and to battle the, the, that spiritual warfare. See, that enemy, that old deceiver, Satan, he likes to trick, trip us up, all right? He, he likes to deceive us. He, he would very much like to give us this this. Um, idea, plant this idea in our head that we are beaten. He's the one that's beaten, but he'd like to keep us beaten and, and defeated. But, but he's, a war, he's a roaring lion. He's seeking, seeking whom he may devour, but he does not get to devour us, right? We're going to stand. I'm not going to preach what he's been teaching, but we're going to stand because we are going to be armed for battle. And we are not alone in this battle. We are, we are here, we are in unity, we are here to uplift one another in prayer and in encouragement. And again, this is going to be very practical. And so I'm going to go through the armor of God, the whole armor of God, but I'm going to go through it from head to toe, and I'm doing that for all of you visual learners. <laughs> So that you have something, it's easier to, to maybe remember it than to go back, oh, what does it say in the, in the scripture and what, what order was it? And you can pray it that way if you want to keep that scripture in front of you and pray it that way, that's fine. I, I started out praying it from head to toe because it helped me remember it. So that's how I'm going to teach it tonight. So first we're going to start with the helmet of salvation. And when we pray on the helmet of salvation, we're dealing with our head issues. Has anybody got any head issues? <laughs> and I'm not just talking about headaches tonight. If you want to turn in your Bibles to 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, verse 13. So I didn't get all fancy and put my notes into my, all of my scriptures into my notes, so I have to find it in my Bible. <laughs> but 1 Peter... Chapter 1 and verse 13 says, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. We have here that we're to gird up the loins of our mind. Gird, that actual action of girding, was tucking in of the robe in the, in the Bible times into a belt so that there was unhindered movement. And so right here in the scripture, we find that we're girding up the loins of our minds. So we're unhindered. We're, we're not influenced by external factors, by circumstances in our life, but that we would have our minds stay on Christ. How many of you remember that, that, that song? I got my mind stayed on Jesus. All right, I, I'm not a singer, but you know, you know what I'm talking about. We've got to wake up with our minds stayed on Jesus, and we got it. And if it's not stayed on Jesus, we got to get it into that place. Second Corinthians chapter uh, ten, verses four and five. It says, "For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds." Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So when I'm praying on that helmet of salvation, we, we have to, to pray that every thought that we have, 
every, every imagination that does, does not line up with the word of God, that d- lines up with, with who God is, we want that to be cast down. God, cast down those, those, those imaginations, those thoughts. Let every thought that I have, let it be brought into the obedience of Christ. The scripture in, in um, hold on one second, I'm getting ahead of myself. The knowledge of God is founded upon the word of God. And and that was just what Pastor was just saying as he introduced me. We're talking about praying on the home armor of God. But we have to know the word of God. We have to know the word of God. we got to read it. We've got to meditate, memorize it. Philippians 4, 6 through 8. It says, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. These are the things that we should think on. And 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 so I we start, we pray on that helmet of salvation. We ask God, help me to think on those things. And every time a thought that is not in alignment with your word and in alignment to the truth of who you are, then God, I want to replace that thought with something that is good, something is, that is right, something that is just. And help me to do that, Lord. So the word of God is a powerful resource for a mind that wanders, fears, doubts. It's okay. Thank you, Brother Mo. It was probably marking one of my scriptures, but it's okay. We're good. <laughs> I'm a little old-fashioned. But... Those, the mind that wanders, <laughs> those, you know, um, anxiety, those, those things. The word of God is powerful for that kind of mind. I know I've had those struggles before, and, and God has helped me. God has helped me not to be so fearful, not to have these doubts, because I have prayed and asked him to help me. So we, we have the word of God, and, and it, in Psalm 11 and 3, it says, Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And in and, 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 and times where, where your mind is beginning to wonder or, or fear or doubt or anxiety, no, 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 talk to yourself. Know ye, know ye. <laughs> that the Lord, he is God. Job 19, for I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. I know that my Redeemer liveth. Romans 8 and 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. And Romans 8, 38, for I am persuaded, I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We can go to the scripture, we can know who he is. Know who he is. There's power in knowing the word of God. I I can't miss this one either. Philippians 1 and 6, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. (laughs) He's not finished. He's going to keep working for our good until he returns. Quit thinking that he is up against you. Don't let those kind of thoughts come into your mind. He's working for you. He loves you. Gird up your mind and let the word of God declare who he is. And so we come to the breastplate of righteousness. And this, we dealt with our our issues of our mind. We're going to deal with the issues of our heart. And this is a place of repentance and, and confession. David said, search my heart. 
every part. <laughs> he said, there's no hiding place from God. I'm going to give you a scripture reference for you to go and read this. This is a good psalm for you to pray, uh, Psalm 139. And, 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 and if you haven't been taught that, if you don't know what to pray, you can go into the word of God. Praying scripture is a powerful way to pray. You know you're praying in the will of God because it's the word of God. <laughs> So Psalm 139, that's a good one because, I mean, if you think that you've gone too far from God, go read Psalm 139. There is no hiding place from God. He will find you. Psalm 51 and 10, um, a, another great scripture to go and pray if you, if, if you have to, to repent of something or even just your daily confession and repentance with the Lord. But that, that, that is a great psalm to pray. But in that, in 51 and 10, it's create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. And, and so we're dealing with our motivations. We're dealing with our attitudes. God, I want to do the right thing for the right reasons. I want to say the, the, the right things for the right reasons. God, I want you to deal with the motivations in my heart, the attitudes. I, I don't want to get, I, let me just say this, but that is, that is what Pastor was teaching on when he was talking about allowing us to entertain certain spirits and certain, certain, certain emotions that come up, and if we entertain them too long, they can start to, to, to get a foothold in our lives. <laughs> That's why we got to take these two things to the Lord. We got to take these attitudes, these, these, God create in me, just search my heart. God forgive me, forgive me of the things I've said, the things I've thought, the things I've allowed my ears to hear, the things that I've allowed my eyes to see. Forgive me of those things. Wash me, cleanse me. We need God to deal with our heart issues every day. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 8. says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to clean, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. But listen to this. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not and that if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. We have somebody to take those sins to, to confess them, and then we get to put on his righteousness. <laughs> Psalm 103 verse 9 says, he's not always going to chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He is willing to forgive us of our sins. <laughs> he's willing to, to, to wash those away. All we have to do is open up our hearts and confess those sins to him. It says in, in verse 13 of that same Psalm 103, like a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. He forgives. He covers our sins. It's not our breastplate of righteousness that we're putting on. We're putting on his righteousness. We're clothed in his righteousness. Isaiah 61 and 10, and I know I use a lot of scripture, and, 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 and you may be having a hard time keeping up with me, but I'm telling you, it's the word of God. It can feed ourselves, it can it feed our souls, it, it, it's the bread of life, it's what we need to sustain us. It says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, my soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation, he hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. It's not my righteousness that I'm clothed in. It's his righteousness. My righteousness is as filthy rags. <laughs> but his is pure and white. <laughs> we have forgiveness in God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving us of our sins. And so we go on 
to the next armor that we put on and we gird our loins with truth. And I know that some call this the belt of truth. I just choose to pray when I'm praying it. God, gird my loins with truth (laughs) because I feel like it's more than just this belt we're wearing. But this is something I want your truth in me. Psalm Psalm 51 and 6 says, 51 and 6 says, God desires truth at the inward parts. He desires it in the inward parts. There's something about the transformative power of the Holy Ghost at work in our lives that begins to weed out some things in our lives. And and truth begins to take over. Truth takes takes place of that. (laughs) We begin to be changed. There's another scripture that says that we're, we're changed from glory to glory into that image that, 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 he's, that he is making us into. John 16 and, and 13 says that he's the spirit of truth, guiding us into all truth. That's the Holy Ghost within us, guiding us into all truth. And, and John 4 and 24 says wor- that we must worship in spirit and in truth. God is concerned about truth in our lives. And, and not truth like the world likes to define it, but you know, it's all relevant to the situation. But there is a truth. There is a truth in God's word that we, we need to know. And so we need to pray that. And there are four areas of truth that, that we should pray about in our lives and the first one being the truth of who God is we you know we we can't be deceived there's there's an image of a Jesus that the world likes to 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 put up or the the you know this this loving but really kind of hands-off savior let, let me tell you he is our redeemer he is our savior He is a just God, but he does not dwell in darkness, and he does not like compromise. And so, God, help me to see you who you are so that I can can live for you the way you want me to live for you. And then we need to know the second thing that we we should pray about is the truth of who I am. God, help me to see who I am in you. <laughs> There's that, 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 that new song. I love that song. I am who I am because the I am told me who I am. <laughs> so I, I am's in there. But hey, I'm not defined by my, my coworkers and who they think that I am. I'm not defined by this world. I am defined by who God says that I am. I am his child. Now, I I can't be lifted up in pride, so just like we have to have a balance of who God is, we need to have a balance of who we are. God, I I don't want to be lifted up in pride just because I'm your child. I can't be going around like, yeah, you know who I am. (laughs) There has to be a humility. There is a humility that we must have to be able to operate in the power and the authority of the Holy Ghost. If we're going to be effective soul winners, then we have to have that, that humility as well. But, but we don't have to be beaten down. We don't have to be beaten down. You're a child of God. You're a child of God. I, I'd love to share some stories here, but let me tell you, you are not who your coworker says you are. I, <laughs> you are not defined by the heritage even that you have, okay? And, and I'm, not, I'm talking about, hey, I'm a stubborn, I have German in my bloodline. I can be pretty stubborn, but guess what? I don't have to be because I have the Holy Ghost in me, and God says that's not who I am, all right? So <laughs> you are who God said. God, help me to know who I am in you. So pray that. So pray the truth of who God is, the truth of who I am, the truth of who others are. And once again, we have to have discernment. We need to be able to discern the spirits of those that we we come in contact with. 
We got to discern those spirits. We got, God, give me discernment. Help me, help me to, to try those spirits and to know so that I'm not deceived. But then there are some that God's going to take us to, and they're ready. God, how can I help this one? Help me to see them through your eyes. Because, like, my eyes says, well, they're dirty and they stink. Well, my nose says that. My eyes and my nose say that. But you see someone who needs you. I don't want to be afraid to reach out to that person because God says it's time. You need to, you need to pray with a soul. You need to speak. With. I want to see people for who God sees them to be. And then I want to know the truth of God's word. I cannot stress this enough. We need to rightly divide the word of God Rightly dividing the word of truth. Ephesians 4 and 14 says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in, w lie in wait to deceive. We do not need to be deceived. I told you I was going to need that. Actually, I told him I did not need it until I said that I did not need it. We do not need to be deceived. We can study the word of God. We can memorize and meditate upon the word of God. And we can pray, God, help me not to be deceived. Help me to know the truth of your word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may, might not sin against thee. God, hide your word in my heart. I don't want to sin against you. Fourth, our feet should be shod with the gospel of peace. We should be peacemakers everywhere we go, speaking peace to those around us. <laughs> I want to give the, give the example of going into work, and, and I know some of you know that person that always finds you with a complaint, and, and you want to say, yeah, you're right, they're not treating us right. <laughs> Sister Lucille, they're not giving me my lunch break like I <laughs> I haven't had a lunch break yet this week. <laughs> but we can change that atmosphere. We can bring peace into that, that workplace. We need to take peace everywhere we go, putting back together what the enemy has torn apart, families, individuals, minds and hearts. The enemy has wreaked havoc upon people's lives, and it is our role as ambassadors of Christ to take the gospel to this world. We cannot do it. We're, I am not saying go in there and begin advising people. <laughs> we cannot do it. But the Holy Ghost that is in us that's going to prompt us and give us boldness to speak in a time when it's needed, a word of encouragement to say, I'll pray with you or, or you know, this is something that is beyond anything that I can imagine, but I know a God. I know a God, and I will pray with you about this. Jesus said that he came to fulfill the scripture, to bind up the broken hearts, to set at liberty the captive. Luke 14, 4 and 18 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day, 
is this scripture fulfilled in your ears? And what, what, did, what did Brother Ali preach not too long ago? You are anointed. That same anointing is upon each and every one of us. We are the vessels. We're the testimonies, the epistles to be a read of all men. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Another scripture said, calls it the ministry of reconciliation. And, and that's what I like to pray. God, give me a ministry of reconciliation. He came into this world reconciling me to him, reconciling you to him, and then he gave to us that ministry of reconciliation. And recently, after Pastor has been teaching these last two weeks, I have added to my own prayers, God, bless every home, every business that my feet step into, taking authority. I'm taking authority. I'm proclaiming liberty and deliverance to this community. I'm I am I'm just taking that authority right now in Jesus' name. And then the fifth piece of armor that we're going to talk about tonight is the shield of faith. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. Romans 10 and 8 says, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. When, when they talk about the shield of faith in Ephesians chapter 6, and I, I don't think I had this in my notes, so I'm really sorry whoever is, is following along with the scriptures, but it actually says that ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Now, it suggests that there are going to be darts that hit the shield but it says that the fire will be quenched, all right? So whatever plan and whatever purpose that the enemy had for that dart, it stops right there with that shield of faith. <laughs> no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. <laughs> he, he, yeah, he doesn't get to, to, to do what he intended to do because it is quenched with that shield of faith. That bit of gospel that was heard, that, that, that bit of complaining that they brought to you, it stops right there. The fire goes no further. It's quenched right then. <laughs> Holding up that, that shield of faith. And for your family and for your church, this is where we start to bind together when we're praying and we begin to pray for our church and our brothers and our sisters and we begin to pray for our family and we hold up that shield of faith maybe for those that maybe are not quite, maybe their faith is, is, is not quite as strong right now. I just want to give you a little bit of imagery about this shield. So often we think of of the shield that 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 disc, that round disc, maybe a little Captain America, you got to move it around, you got to bounce it off a couple of surfaces so that you, 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 you get, you got to get all those fiery darts or they're going to get in. But the Roman shield was more like a, a door, like four feet by two and a half feet. Like we're talking, it was a large shield. And when it was stood up, I, Annabelle, will you come up here, buddy? I'm sorry, I'm using. So when she was holding her shield and I was holding my shield, you began to build a wall. I want to bring some more of the young people, but I'm not going to do that. We could have a whole wall up here. But I want you to get that image of a wall where we're praying for one another in faith, believing, and we begin to have that spirit of unity that is so necessary in the church. And we begin to fight and pray, and we are doing spiritual battle for one another. We're not doing this alone, folks. We're in this together. 
And we put all of this on with prayer in the spirit. And again, Pastor mentioned it briefly last week, but Romans chapter 8, verses 26 through 27 talks about praying in the spirit. Praying, likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. There are times that we don't know what to pray. We may have somebody in mind that we want to pray for. We, we want to pray for our church. We want to pray for our family. But there is only some things that we can, we can groan. Groanings that cannot even be uttered because that's, that is the will of God. And so we must get to that place where we are praying in the spirit. And finally, I want to encourage you with this one last scripture. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. <laughs> so you put on this whole armor of God, and you remember that that spirit of God dwells in you. And no matter what you face, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to the pastor. Amen. Hallelujah. Why don't we stand tonight? Across this sanctuary. Hallelujah. Can I just challenge you tonight? If you have never prayed the word of God. When I when I mean understand something, and I, I'm not I love I love Sister Carrie tremendously. Um, I may not die for her, but I'd I'd probably kill somebody for her. I mean, I don't know. I love her tremendously, though. She is my sister. Um, but she come by this. This is not original for her. We were raised and taught to pray the scriptures. It was just something that was established in us. Um, open your Bible. Read and pray the word of God. Speak the word of God. You don't know. I've got a. I've, I've, I've got a. We all go into. I talk, talk to the men last night and in men's Bible study. We get, a, get We get brain fogs. And what? Uh, you just open your Bible. Take those pronouns. You you make them personal. There. It's no longer about David. It's no longer about. It's about me. It's about I. I pray the scripture. And then what was taught to you tonight? I, I hope that you take that. We can talk about the armor of the Lord. It's not a theoretical thing. You put it on. You pray. You take those scriptures and you pray, God, today cover my mind. And you read those words and you pray those words. God, today. God, today I need your faith. God, today I need your truth. God, today I need your peace. God, today I need Amen. And you pray the word of God. It's a powerful word. What, what, it, it's a sanctifying. I know I've taught this before. You know what sanctifying means. It's a, it, it will set you apart. It will burn out of you. It will purify in you. It will set you apart from for his purpose. Amen. It's a powerful word. That's what it means. It, it, it's quick. It's powerful. It's a dividing word. It's a powerful word. I'm thankful for the word of God. I'm thankful oh, for, the, for Sister Carrie's willingness to minister tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Why don't we close in prayer tonight? Why don't you lift your hands to the Lord tonight? Lord, we love you. We thank you, God. We thank you, Lord, for your word, God. 
And I ask God right now this word that has gone forth. I ask that every ear, ear in this house has received it, God. I pray every, every God, every, every person in this house, God, would have received this word tonight. That we would grow in your word, God, and grow closer to you, I pray in Jesus' name. Teach us, O oh God, your word. Teach us to love your word. Teach us to draw close to your word, God. Teach us, O oh Lord, to study your word, God. Teach us, O oh God, to memorize your word, God. Teach us, Lord, to pray your word, I pray in Jesus' name. Go, O oh Lord, with each and every one in this house, I pray that you would lead and guide to every home, God, Lord, and we thank you for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.